The 1980s in Formula One were an era defined by raw power and an almost reckless pursuit of speed, and none embodied its extreme characteristics quite like the BMW M12-13 turbo engine. This tiny 1.5-litre four-cylinder powerhouse derived from a humble 0-2 series road car block became a legend, renowned for its astronomical power outputs and a championship title that etched its name into the annals of motorsport history. While other manufacturers designed bespoke V6 or V8 turbo engines, BMW, under the visionary leadership of Paul Rocha, chose an unconventional path. Their foundation was the M10, a four-cylinder engine block that had been in production since 1961 and had seen service in various road cars and even Formula 2. The decision to use a production block was initially met with skepticism, but it proved to be a masterstroke. The M10's cast iron construction was inherently strong, and a unique, almost mythical practice of using seasoned blocks, those that had accumulated over 100,000 kilometers of road use and were left to weather, was believed to relieve casting stresses, ensuring maximum durability for the extreme forces it would endure. Roshi and his team transformed this workhorse into a 1.5 liters of turbocharged terror. The M12-13 was a 1,499.8 cubic centimeter inline four, featuring a single triple K turbocharger. The true magic, however, lay in its ability to generate truly astonishing levels of boost pressure. While race trim saw figures around 650 to 850 horsepower, it was in qualifying where the M12-13 truly unleashed its inner beast. With waste gates often sealed shut, boost pressures soared, and the engine was estimated to produce upwards of an incredible 1,400 horsepower. Roche himself famously quipped that, we don't know for sure, as the dyno didn't go beyond 1,280 horsepower. This made the M12-13 the most powerful engine ever to race in Formula 1, a record that stands to this day, even against modern hybrid power units. But the sheer, unadulterated power came with a significant caveat, turbo lag. Drivers described the M12-13's power delivery as coming on like a light switch, after a noticeable two-second delay. This required a completely different driving style, demanding immense skill and anticipation from the drivers. Corners were often taken with the throttle pedal fully depressed, hoping that the boost would arrive precisely as the car straightened out on the exit. Misjudgment could lead to violent oversteer and a sudden trip into the barriers. This characteristic, while challenging, also contributed to the engine's mystique and the spectacular nature of 1980s Turbo F1. The BMW M12-13 made its Formula One debut in 1982 with the Brabham team, led by the astute Bernie Ecclestone and designed by the brilliant Gordon Murray. The initial season was a learning curve, plagued by reliability issues as the team grappled with the immense power and its effects on the chassis. Despite teething problems, the potential was clear when Nelson Piquet secured the engine's first victory at the 1982 Canadian Grand Prix. However, 1983 was the year the M12-13 truly came of age. In the revolutionary Brabham BT-52, with its distinctive dart-like shape, the BMW engine propelled Nelson Piquet to the Drivers' World Championship. This triumph was not just a testament to Piquet's talent and Brabham's innovative design, but also a vindication of BMW's audacious engineering philosophy. It marked the first time a turbocharged engine had won the Formula One World Championship, fundamentally shifting the paradigm of engine design in the sport. Beyond Brabham, the M12-13 also found its way into the chassis of other teams, including ATS, Arrows, and Benetton, albeit with varying degrees of success. 
Benetton, in particular, saw a strong performance in 1986, winning the Mexican Grand Prix with Gerhard Berger behind the wheel. The customer engines, while still potent, often didn't achieve the same peak performance as the factory Brabham units, a result of bespoke tuning and access to the latest developments. The M12-13's reign, while glorious, was not without its struggles. Its monstrous power placed immense strain on all components, leading to compromised reliability, especially in its early years and when pushed to its qualifying limits. The grenades, as the qualifying engines were sometimes called, were designed to last a mere handful of laps before being discarded, a stark contrast to today's focus on engine longevity. Furthermore, the insatiable thirst for fuel was a constant concern, particularly as fuel restrictions became increasingly stringent throughout the decade. On slower, more technical circuits, the significant turbo lag could also put BMW-powered cars at a disadvantage against rivals with more responsive V6 or V8 engines. As the 1980s progressed, Formula One moved towards tighter regulations, aiming to curb the escalating power and improve safety. Fuel limits became more restrictive, and the era of uncontrolled boost pressures began to wane. By 1988, with Brabham temporarily withdrawing from the sport and BMW officially pulling its factory backing, the M12-13 engines continued under the Megatron badge with the Arrows team. However, the writing was on the wall. For the 1989 season, turbocharged engines were banned altogether, rendering the M12-13 and its entire breed obsolete. Despite its relatively short competitive life, the BMW M12-13 left an indelible mark on Formula One. It was a symbol of an era of no-compromise engineering, a time when horsepower figures spiraled to unprecedented heights. It proved that a humble road car block combined with radical turbocharging and brilliant engineering could conquer the pinnacle of motorsport. The M12-13 was a truly untamed beast, a testament to the pursuit of ultimate performance and a legendary chapter in BMW's rich motorsport heritage. Its legacy continues to fascinate and inspire, a reminder of a bygone era when brute force and audacious innovation reigned supreme.